Hi, and welcome to this video where I'm going to walk you through how to create a custom connector for Dynamics 365 Business Central using Azure Logic Apps. This short demonstration will cover firstly how to publish a new web service in Business Central. Then in Logic Apps, we'll configure a custom connector to generate new customer records in Business Central. We'll then create the connector definition, and then finally we'll test the connector inside Logic Apps to check that everything is running as expected. Firstly, we need to go to Business Central. For the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to use the demo Cronus database. And we need to, first of all, create a new web service. So I'm going to search for my web service page. And once the web services list page opens, we're going to select new to create the new service. Now, for the purposes of this demonstration, I've already created a new web service, so I'm just going to search for that one. And in the new blank row that appears, when you click, click New, you first of all need to select the object type Page, and then the object ID 21. And this is the customer car page, so it brings through the object name for you. I need that to then type in a service name of customer, and when I'm happy with all that set up, I click Publish. And once the web service has been successfully published, the URL fields here are automatically updated by Business Central. And that's done. We've com completed creating our new web service. So now I can go into our Azure portal. So I go to portal.azure.com, and here I'm going to create a new customer custom connector. I need to go to the relevant resource group. Resource group is a location for all the resources for a specific project, for example. Um, I've been in, into one already this morning, so it's in my recent resources here. So rather than select resource group, I'm going to select my resource group straight away from here. And we need to create this new custom connector. It's a new resource, so we need to select add. And we're going to search for our logic apps. So I'm going to type in the search bar custom connector. And you can see as I'm typing, it comes up with the suggestion logic apps. So I'm going to select that. And we're going to create one. So click create. OK. Once the uh, new has come up, we've got two things to do. First of all, we need to put a custom connector name in. So I'm going to my custom customer connector like so and we just need to check the location so the location must be the same as the resource group in this case it's uk south which is correct click review and create the new resource will be reviewed and if everything's okay you've got the option to create okay so now hopefully our new resource has been provisioned and we can now start to set up the configuration. So we do that by going finding our new resource that we've created. It takes a little bit of time to refresh. There it is there. And once it appears, our customer connector in this case, we can click on it to open it. And to start the configuration, we need to click edit. Now the first thing to do on the general tab is to look at the API setup. And for the purposes of demonstration, I'm going to select the default ones, uh, the API endpoint of REST, and an import mode of open API file. I've got the option here to upload a logo for um, our connector. I've got a Business Central logo at hand, so let's upload that one quickly. There we go. And we need to give it a description just so that anybody who's looking at the connector knows what it's all about. So let's call it business. Okay. Now the scheme I'm going to leave as the default HTTPS uh, because we only want to have secured calls. And then the last and important thing is to put in the host. This is the Business Central API. So here we need to type in api.businesscentral.com. 
or one word dot dynamics dot com. Check that you've typed that in correctly. And we're all happy. That's the first stage configured. We can now move on to configuring the security. So we click security. Again, we need to click edit. And the first thing to do is to select the type of authentication. And we're going to use basic authentication. Because we set this up, uh, first time we connect to the connector, it'll ask for a username and password. And we've got the opportunity here to actually set the labels for when those, those two parameters are asked for. So we'll keep it simple. We'll just call it username and password. And these will appear when we first connect. OK, that's the security all done and configured. So we can now move on to the connector definition. Now on the definition page, we're going to define how the actual connector works, how it's going to function. So the first thing we need to do then is click new action. So actions represent a CRUD matrix. In other words, what a connector should do. So um, could create, read, update or delete, for example. In our case, it's going to create, it's going to create a new customer record. And I've got the opportunity here to put in a summary, a description and an operation ID for this action. I'm going to keep it all nice and simple. I'm just going to call create customer in the summary and the description, and I'll paste that into operation ID as well. I'm going to keep the visibility to the default of none, which is a standard fit setting. Um, this is the user facing visibility for an entity, for example, uh, so that it can be used in logic apps. And when we've done that, we can scroll down to the next section, which is request. Um, and here we're going to specify the information needed to connect the, to the API. So I'm going to click on import from sample. And the first thing we need to do is define the verb, what it's going to do. And in this case, it's going to post. It's going to create a new customer record. <clears throat> um, and this way, it's possible for external applications to actually do this, create the record in Business Central. I then have to define the URL. Now, um, the uh, URL we can copy and paste from the OData link provisioned by Business Central for the web services page 21, the customer card page. We can retrieve this from going back into Business Central and going to our OData URL, copying that link and then pasting it back into here, into our URL field. And then in the body, we're going to indicate which fields we want to update using the custom connector when we create the record. And we can do this using JSON notation. I'm going to put in here the following three fields. So we're going to create a customer record in Business Central. And we're going to populate the fields number, the field name and the field blocked. We need to be very careful how we put this JSON notation in. If you notice, we've actually at the moment got a blue surround around the box. If I forget to put a comma in, for example, it validates that notation and spots as an error. So we need to make sure we've got the commas, colons, brackets all in the right place. If everything's correct and it's validated successfully, the import button becomes available to you. So we click import. And everything looks fine. OK, so finally, the final step is let's test it. So the first thing to do is to use the Swagger editor for testing purposes. So we click on Swagger editor. And we update connector. Let's just click the Swagger editor again. And the first thing we need to do is to authorize it. So this is using our basic authentication that we selected previously. And in here, we're going to put in your username and the web service access key for your access to Business Central. Now, you can get this by going into Business Central, going to the users list page, finding a user, and you can copy the username and the web service access key 
copied into the password field. Notice we've got basic author authorization, which we selected in the security setup and the labels username and password, which we also um, typed in. Click authorize when we have this and it's all been successfully authorized so we can close that down. OK, next we can um, select our connector that we've created, so create customer, is what we called it. And you can see the three fields that we have um, determined that will be used to create the new customer record. On the left hand side, we've got the code. It shows the database that we're going to connect to, Cronus. And we've got the three fields, number, name and block that we're going to update. We need to put some meaningful um, values in here so that to, so we can test that it's actually creating a new customer record. So let's click on try it out. And in here, I'm going to put in non H7 test and we'll call the customer Mr. 987 test and we'll say blocked is true and when we've got that already we've then got the option to execute the code so it runs through and we can scroll down and see whether it's been successful in this case we've got an error and you can see here that in the response um, we've got value true is not an option. The existing options are ship, invoice or all. And that's the block field. And as you might well know, those are the options in the block field. We haven't got an option of true. So let's go back into my settings and change true to or block tool. And let's try and execute the code again. So if we scroll down, no errors, it's all been executed successfully. So the final thing to do is to go back into Business Central and see whether it's actually created a customer record correct, correctly. So I'm going to go to my customers and in the customer list page, I'm going to search on my new customer, which was 987. And as you can see, the new record's been corrected, created, so let's Click on the link. And when it opens, you can see the customer number is 987test. The name is Mr. 987test. And the status is blocked all. So now we've successfully created a customer record in Business Central. Uh, and this is how you can create a custom connector um, which will link in and create a record in Business Central. In the following episodes in this series, we'll use the custom connector that we've created today and embed this in a business process within Azure. Thank you very much for watching.